Okay, how do you come up with Hattie? Committed version till 22 and a committed slut from 55 on. I'm out there. I'm fucking. I love it. I think it's great. (laughs) 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 All right, Hattie. But ultimately, I still want my man. Sure. First question is, how are you feeling right now? Excited. Being in front of the camera is one thing if you're having a snapshot. But being in front of a camera that's going to speak to many people is another matter. It's just an amazing gift. I'm so privileged. (laughs) So can you talk about what your style says about you? People will say to me, you're a fashionista. I love it. I love it. She is. Look at her. I don't follow fashion. I wear what my body and my being tells me to wear. Amen. So what I'm wearing are things that I found. So they are not. You know what? Same. I was just having this epiphany. Not really, but like I was just having this thought in my bathroom today where I genuinely will wear the same thing for weeks in a row. Not the same outfit, but the same combination of clothing, like the vibe. If It's all about how I feel, like my body feels how I feel. Like, I don't really decide like what I'm going to wear. I, my body decides. So like today I had a different outfit planned today. I had a different clothes planned and my body was like, I don't like that. That feels gross. And I was like, okay. So like, boom, we switched and we're, our t- I was going to wear a sweater and my body was like, we are not wearing a sweater today. And I was like, okay, but are you sure? Because I feel like that's the vibe. And my body was like, that is not the vibe. And I was like, okay, It's not up to me. Like, if I don't feel good in what I'm wearing, like, texture-wise, like, I'm not, we're not going to do it. Not only representative of me, but they're me. And it created the word, which I love, authentic. No, no, you are wrong. Chat says she's not a cougar. Scientific term is gilf. She doesn't have kids or, right? Like, she's not a grandma. Because grandma is gilfs, right? She's, She's a cougar. Because... She's not a granny. So isn't she still a cougar? Or no, is it, is it too literal? Is that too literal? Is it, is it actually about the age? I'm like fucking authentic. Dressed, undressed, sleeping, fucking. It's like Hattie. She's there. She's fully there. Wow. I was looking for her a long time. I found her in a thrift shop. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't too worn out, and I, I got her. <laughs> Has your style changed with age, and if so, in what ways? Being a cougar or an older woman who fucks young guys or fucks all together, there's all sorts of stereotypes that go along with being old, and most of them are anti-sexual. And mm. so, as you would imagine, I just used all those stereotypes and did the opposite. Again, it goes back to authenticity. Who am I? What am I communicating? Mm. I'm communicating freedom. Okay, don't get me wrong. I love a grandma vibe. I love like innocent old lady vibes. I love vibes of like, I'm too old to fuck. I don't want to do it anymore. But then I also love this vibe. And like, it's always about, it's like, it's like when I decorate a home, I want it to be goth and full of eclectic, just like vibes. And then I want it to be minimalist with only a single chair in the living room. And I want long hair and I want short hair at the same time. I just want to snap my fingers and live in all the vibes. And I feel like some days I want to be hurt. And some days I'm like, I'm old. Don't touch me. I'm retired. No more sex. And then some days I'm like, let's go. You know, I just want to be able to snap my fingers and be all the things what I feel like it. What are assumptions that people make about you based on how you look and appear? People have very positive reactions. Nobody has negative reactions to me. You know who does? Older men. Their dicks don't get hard, and they want to find women who get their dicks hard, and they assume an older woman can't get their dick hard. And I'm not interested in in giving them proof. (laughs) If I went to a bar mitzvah, a family (laughs) thing, I might not allow my breasts to come out of my dress. Oh. In fact, I have bought clothing in a thrift shop so that my, I don't have massive cleavage. And then I go to the event and then I give the dress back <laughs> to the thrift shop. <laughs> Most people like the idea that I'm having sex, mostly because of how I look. Now, if I looked like a typical 80-something-year-old, maybe people would say, 
who would fuck that wrinkled mass? Other people my age say how to get out of my face. Been there, done that. They don't have the feelings anymore. They have memories. Lost memories of youth. All sorts of unfulfilled dreams. People are allowed to love babies with their vomit and with their smelly diapers. <laughs> but they're not allowed to love themselves in the same way. Now, I'm not Ooh. saying you should have a smelly diaper, but <laughs> make sure that you do what you need to feel good. True. When did you become in touch with your sexuality in such a like potent way? Was there ever a time that you weren't? I became in touch with my sexuality, and I mean in touch, three years old. She's 86, for those wondering. She is almost 90 years old. She is moving. That's what I mean. My partner and I, we're stretching, we're moving, we're trying to, we're, we're really trying to uh, stay nimble because we want to be old and mobile, okay? We do not want to be not, right? And for the record, I've watched this channel on my own before. I've never really gotten into their content as a consumer, but I figured for streaming might be fun. She's going to take off her clothes. I forget, though. It's not, it's not like completely nude. She'll be in her underwear by the end. Good. Felt good. You started playing with yourself at three years old. My father, take that pillow out from between your legs, Hattie. <laughs> I played with myself and I had orgasms and I remember them. I remember climbing on poles and then grabbing my legs together and holding it there. How do you keep climbing? <laughs> I didn't know that orgasms had anything to do with sex. I was a virgin until I was 22, girl. Me too. Uh, oh my God, 22 age club. Let's go. So what did I know about a dick coming inside me? I just <laughs> knew that I'd have a tickle, pull oh. my legs together, and have one orgasm after another in Carnegie Hall in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> How did you express this then? And like, did you have anyone to talk to? Or like, what, what was your relationship with the world? It's such a different era, honey. I'm in my 80s. If you want to get laid, you got married. If a bra strap showed, you were badly dressed. So were you like modestly dressed back then? Were you? No. Or when were you looking for marriage? Were you looking for your husband? Marriage. Did you lose your virginity to your husband or what happened? Pretty much. I had one guy because my man that I married said, I don't want a virgin. So I asked my friend Ralph, oh. my man I have to marry doesn't want me to be a virgin. Would you take care of He said, sure. Oh. And then I got married. Oh. And we had sex continuously, twice a day, sometimes three times, for 25 years. Bless. Jeff God bless both of you. Holy fuck. Jack was always the star of our relationship. That was good. And the dynamic of me as a mother, a wife and mother. Oh, she does have kids. Okay, y'all. She does have kids. Mother changed. I became a therapist. And I created movement therapy. And he was disgusted by my putting myself out there as something special or somebody special. And he just blurted out one night, I'm divorcing your mother. Oh. So I left. Oh. Then the ads started for the guys. Oh. In those days, there was no internet. So in the newspaper, it said that I'm looking for a supremely sexual man under 35. I was 55. And interesting enough, I never really figured it out totally my obsession with young men. Dr. Phil said to me, why are you doing this? I said, I think- Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil. I think I wanted to go back to before I was married and start a love life again. What is your biggest struggle right now in your life? My anguish at being alone. Oh. The more famous I become, and the more I give of myself, which I love to do, the more I want something to hold. And the finer and kinder I am as a human being. Has she ever thought about actual therapy? It sounds like she definitely needs to work some stuff out in therapy for sure. I wonder what it's about. Because it is interesting. Like, there's definitely some layers here of uh, unsolved trauma of sorts. 
Yeah, interesting, interesting. I want to share that with a man and have him, we partake of each other's humanity. All of the um, relationships that you've been having from 55 on, all of the exploration, like... Have any of them been serious relationships? Or yeah, the first one wasn't serious, it was fun. But another one was a guitarist. He had a girlfriend that he said he broke up with her, and she was traveling with a, a company doing hair or some kind of musical. One day I'm living in his apartment and I hear on his machine, I miss you so much, I'm coming home, I can't wait to see you. So he was in Canada, he calls me, he was performing. I said, I don't think she knows you broke up with her. <laughs> so he said, what should I do? I said, well, you see her, make love and make your decision. So, oh, 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 okay. She's definitely one of those like, super free spirits, very specific category of person. Yeah, like, like this is a very specific category of person. Interesting, interesting. Huh, there's so much to deconstruct here. There's so much. Yeah, oh wow, interesting, interesting. Not much to say, but you know there's something here that works and doesn't work, but the doesn't work it probably just needs a few tweaks, but interesting. Oh, he sees her, then I go see him, and I know he's given up on me. The emotional anguish was so horrid that I went to a domination parlor. My of friend course. owned it. I asked her for a room, and I asked a friend of mine to whip me, hoping that the... Just a reminder, BDSM is not a replacement for therapy. <laughs> Okay, guys, BDSM, sex, money, gambling, none of it is a replacement for therapy. Okay, just like a soft reminder. I get it. Therapy was even less accessible probably than a BDSM dungeon, but just like a reminder, getting whipped is not going to help you like in the long run. It's just going to feel good for the moment. But we love a good whipping session. Physical pain could help me overcome the emotional pain. So I was living under the delusion and maybe just because I enjoy sucking so much that I didn't want to face my deeper need. I just put ads in and fucked, put ads in and fucked. And the few times that the love affair did not materialize, horrible, beyond hard. Now, do you feel like you can just have like sex without wanting more? I always want more. But I made up a word, and I made up the word heartectomy. The heartectomy is I have to say to myself, you may never see him again. Yeah, this is depressing now. Now I'm depressed. See? Now I'm depressed. This is, this is what I mean to say. It looks fun, free spirit, but see how she isn't ever satisfied? She's not actually feeling fulfilled in her life. Now I'm depressed. Now I'm sad. This turned into fun, sad. Now I'm sad. Enjoy the love you may feel. It will not be capped off with the marriage proposal. So he may not ever come again, so to speak. He may never come again. But it turned out that I didn't even want to just fucking be okay with it. Sure. Are you like stopping casually having sex? Yes, until no, you find I'm something. stopping casuals okay okay she's in a new era of her life okay we love a good cope it's totally fine that's her journey and what's cool is like she's going for it so now she's going for something different which is cool to see right that says would her turning to getting whipped be a form of self-harm probably realistically but i think it's a cope as well and not all copes are a form of self-harm but some copes can be a form of self-harm um and i like that because i think what happens is look Things are only as satisfying until they're not, right? And things are a cope until they're not. And things can be temporary and that's okay. But it's good that she understands she's not feeling fulfilled, which I think is really important. Six. And I, for the first time, went to something called Our Time, which is for older people. This guy picks up on me. We've been writing back and forth. I mean, like six times back and forth already. You're excited? I'm excited, but he's 58. We'll see. I see. 
earrings. Someone has to help me with the necklace. I love those uh, earrings. And so at the end of the day, like, what do you feel like being a self-proclaimed slut and all the sex is so empowering, but on the other hand, it's like you haven't gotten the deeper thing you need. So how are you reckoning with those two forces? I can't reckon with it. I have to admit that I am not beyond anguish. I'm not beyond depression. I am faced with them daily mm. and I go mm. about my business because I can't be paralyzed. So I swim and I... Good for her. Good for her to be so self-aware, to be very open and to say, it's not going to keep me down. I'm going to keep going, but it doesn't mean I don't suffer. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Go to MoMA and I have dinner with friends and I do things, but it's bad to have this amount of love, passion, contribution, care, kindness, to have that much and not have a man to give it to or share it with, that's not okay with me. If I weren't gifted with this extraordinary capacity for love, if I didn't feel it this powerfully, I wouldn't feel the lack of it that powerfully. I hate to say this, and this is probably not even, um, I, I hate to say it this way, but the truth is, is uh, I'm never convinced uh, that it's about having a partner, but maybe, right? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Someone's brain might be that way. It just feels unrealistic to have to need a partner to find that fulfillment. But I will say that it might, she, I don't know if she's much of a community person, but it's hard to know what your fulfillment will be until you've internalized a lot. Like if you're not internally motivated, it seems she's very externally motivated, which, motivated, which a lot of you have already said in chat. To be that externally motivated is, is gonna keep you from understanding why you need these things, but who knows? Fishy says, I wanna see more stories of people like this who aren't coping, but are just genuinely fulfilled and living their lives. I feel like so many stories are just people coping. I think, you, I think most people are coping in some aspect and probably too much and most people are settling and it won't really matter because we have an average of 80 years on life and then we die. But I will say that to find a person that is truly fulfilled in this sense, unless they are a specific type of content creator, a lot of people start off content creation. I mean, I certainly did looking for myself, right? And so she's looking for herself. And so we do all of these things because we're looking for ourselves. We socialize because we're looking for ourselves. We talk to people because we're looking for ourselves. And then eventually when you find yourself and you're fulfilled, the way things happen, they can shift. You can still be a person who's making content. You can still be a person that's socializing. You can still be a person that's a community member. I just think it looks different. So to find people that are living these lives and not coping is like looking for people who don't settle in relationships. They're usually just not accessible to you because they're busy living peacefully in their own lives, unless they are on a rare occasion, a content creator, which in that case, they're probably not broadcasting their relationships online or speaking in great detail about their life, right? I mean, if you'll notice my old content from 10 years ago was all about like my sex life, right? I don't talk about my sex life anymore. Like the, my old content used to be about my relationships and the ups and downs of my life. I don't talk about that stuff anymore. I'm too joyful. I'm too happy to make it the content, right? Like, and so at the end of the day, like for some people that is what they're doing in order to find themselves. It was what I was doing to find myself. But yeah, like as much as I talk about my relationship now, I certainly don't share the way I used to share. Oh my God. The way I used to share was way too inappropriate. And now I'm too healed to be that inappropriate, which we saw in this. I don't know if I posted it yet. The Hannah episode. Did I post it yet? I think it's the, I think it might be the episode I'm editing right now where she goes and tells everybody about Nick D's sexual history, which is so inappropriate because he asked her not to. And now all of us know it because he's on Netflix. Like, this is what's crazy about people. It's like, we are in Hannah's so young and so effed up. And like, that's just the thing she thought was reasonable. But like, he asked you not to share with producers and now it's all over Netflix. And now I know Nick's sexual history. That's crazy. That, that is like YouTube, but on Netflix, it is kind of crazy, right? So I think like to say that people aren't coping is kind of, it's hard. It, it is hard. And Hannah's so young, I get it. But like, geez, all of this to say, hard to find people that aren't coping. 
you know, when that's literally what the world kind of teaches you to do. Anyways, if you guys are interested in the Love is Blind series, members have access to me reviewing it right now, and it is crazy. I have to record one more episode before the reunion on Halloween, and I am stoked to see how this ends because my predictions, none of them are good. Don't spoil it. But my prediction right now is none of them are going to be together by the reunion. But who knows? Who knows? And I also know that if I had it, all that would come alive. I want it to come alive. Come on, I'm 86. I'm, I'm more than ready. She wants to feel fulfilled. She wants to live her life. She wants to feel her joy. She's, she's getting towards her joy, but she doesn't know what it is. She's not in her joy. Love her hair. Her hair is so good. <laughs> when do you feel the most vulnerable? I feel vulnerable. Chat says, wait, is she saying she wants to find her person? She is saying that, but I think what she's really saying is she wants to find herself. I don't think she has an honest, fulfilled relationship with herself. I think she has a really good foundation for one. I think she spent all of her life externalizing, but hasn't spent enough time like being introspective. Like she's been extrospective a lot, but she hasn't been introspective. Like who am I without all of these things? She only knows, she thinks that if she finds her person, it will be the answer, but I actually don't think so, right? But maybe, maybe, right? I can't speak to this, not like I would know, but I don't think so. I think, I think she's really looking for a relationship with herself. Well, right now, because the questions you're asking go very deeply into my being and that response has... Um, vulnerable softness. You are eliciting the deepest truth I can share. And I thank you. <laughs> thank you for going deep. What else might you feel vulnerable outside of this room? <laughs> when, I see, when I see my credit card usage, very vulnerable. When am I going to pay this off before the interest takes over? <laughs> <laughs> when do you feel the most beautiful? Well, I feel most beautiful. Chat says, is it, is, is it genuinely vulnerable or is it artificially vulnerable? Um, I think it's vulnerable to an extent, right? But like channels like this, the reason I don't watch them is it does feel too artificially vulnerable because that's what they're made to do. But I will say for some people, this is, this is exactly the space they need to be vulnerable in a way they never have been. Is it truly completely vulnerable? No, but that takes years to come to. Like to get truly, truly vulnerable, it takes a lot of time with yourself to ever be there. A lot of us don't do it because it's a cope for survival. A lot of us can't afford to be vulnerable right? Because we might crush under the weight of our realizations, which is why introspection is so difficult. But I will say that for some people, this might be the space to have a bubble pop moment. And the same way that people have told me my discord has been a really safe and vulnerable space for them. Like, okay, cool. Like whatever your tool is to feel that vulnerability, it's going to get you one step closer to knowing yourself. It's not going to be the tool because it's never one thing. It's an, a, a, a combination of all the things that led up into the moment where you have a realization and then it keeps going, right? Beautiful when I'm being most real, most kind, most good. If I'm looking at someone and I see that how I speak to them matters, I feel beautiful for that. And how do you feel about like your wrinkles? Like, do you find them beautiful? Do you feel what wrinkles? <laughs> She's got great wrinkles though. Like, she looks great for an old person. Like, she's got great old people wrinkles. <laughs> I look. And I asked myself, do these wrinkles really matter to me? Yo, that's what my legs look like right now. She look good, though. They, they don't. What matters to me is this muscle, these muscles. Can we see how flexible you are? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yo, hey, that's really important, bro. It's really important to be able to sit on the floor. Are you guys sitting on the floor? Are you practicing getting up off the floor? You need to do this. You need to touch your toes to the ground. I do it every day. You need to sit on the floor and make sure you can get up. This is very important. Okay? You guys better do this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Are you never entertained Botox, plastic surgery, anything like that? Never. I don't want to insult my body. There has to be a way to honor what time takes and what time gives. And that's what I live with. Why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, in you, why is it a good place to be? It feels like a car, like it's a vehicle mm -hmm. taking me. Amen, girl, amen. Somewhere. Because so much on the inside is out of my control. It's like a mechanism that's going on on its own. Oh, interesting. Interesting. See how she externalizes? Oh, very interesting insight to how her brain works. It doesn't exactly feel like I own it. <gasps> it's almost like my body owns me because oh. it's so powerful in what it does to keep a human being alive. How do you feel? Uh, cool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel brave. Takes a long time to, to stop hiding. Because once you're hiding is who you are. Just me. Just me. That was so beautiful. And amazing. You like just are so incredible. I'm going to give you a hug. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Really great vibes, bro. We love to see it. Let's see how the comments are reacting. I'm going to like this video. Um, let's see. Chat quoted her saying, there's got to be a way to honor what time takes and what time gives. Love that. It takes a long time to stop hiding because what you're hiding is who you are. Love that. Okay. Very cool video. Very interesting. Yeah, there's so much to be said about where you are in your story. And like, she's in a very specific place. It's why I don't really hold on to the idea that like, oh, by a certain age, you should have certain things figured out. I think it's more or less like, who are you in the story? And does it make sense for your story to have been like, for me, I will say that based on who I am in my story, it would make sense that I would reach certain goals by a certain quote age. But for all people, it's not that way. For some people, like I remember I would go to the BDSM dungeon and people in their 80s and 90s would show up and be like, I just discovered I could do this for my life. I just discovered I could be this person. I just discovered versus I was sitting there at like 22, 21. And I was like in the dungeon at 21 years old. You know what I mean? 22 years old. Like that was like a really young moment to start that journey versus some people who are starting it their 90s. Like I had that realization coming out of conservatism and a Catholic bubble that like I could be sexually liberated. I was able to be sexually liberated in my early twenties through my twenties. People don't even start that journey until they're 80 or 90. So it's kind of amazing to see people make those decisions and to have those realizations and to have those bubble pops. And there's no wasted time. There's no need for regret. There's only opportunities to keep living a better and better life. Interesting. Now, if you saw her, and at first you were like, oh my God, I want to be her when I'm older. But then as you learned her story, you realize like, oh, she's kind of still sad. Wait, I don't want to be her when I'm older. That's a really good realization to have. Cause like she gives off this initial image. It's like, oh my God, this is so fun. And then you get to the real crux of it and you're like, oh, she's kind of sad. Okay. How do we have a relationship with that sadness that says, how do I make sure I learn from her lived experience in the same way we're learning from everybody's? And I think there is a way to do that. I think the image of what she gives out is reasonable to have ownership, to have a relationship with self, to feel confident, to be brave, to be unashamed. You know, all of those things are beautiful, but they don't necessarily come without that lived life, that bubble popping. But also it might not be as fulfilled for every person that experiences it. So many people I know are liberated in so many ways, but are still trapped in others. And that's just our life. We're always working on ourselves. We're always getting better. All right. Great video. Oh, very interesting, huh? 
Do you think she's stunted still? Sure. All of us are stunted in different ways, but sure. I think she was really honest about that. I think she said she was stunted, right? In ways like she's expressing that. Dun, dun, dun. 